Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffson, LCSW from Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another musical breakdown. I have over 25 years experience in mental health, and I've worked with people from the ages of 3 to 83. I have worked in emergency rooms, inpatient and outpatient, and also all aspects of mental health. I've assessed thousands of people. I tend to go to people's homes to really understand what's going on, and I'm fully versed in trauma and how it affects those who have to live with it. Next week, I want to clarify, the 22nd at 5.30 Western Coast, West Coast time, we are doing a live training on dysfunctional families. The price of it will be $10 via PayPal, and if you want to go with crypto, not to worry, we accept that as well. All information is in the information box on our website, and if you have any questions, you can send us an email, and we'll tell you how to get started via the crypto. Tonight's video is by an artist, and we have a lot of fans in England, Santan Dave. Young rapper with a lot to say. And again, we have a huge following in England. This is, guys this and girls, this is for you. The song that I'm going to be breaking down tonight is Psycho. And it's an interesting song because it has a lot of facets to me. And it because Psycho, well, mental health, that's what I'm dealing with. And I'm working with, so I want to clarify a lot of things that I found very interesting about the song. Here we go. He's a young guy. He's only 23 years old. And once again, it's amazing to me how talented people are today. Just incredible. His lyrics are very strong. He's known for that. Musically very talented. Just a great artist. Now, he is from, obviously, from England. And what's interesting to me is about his family history. He had a father who was a pastor and had come from Nigeria with his mother, who's a nurse. There was some confusion about the visa. The father had thought that he was on a missionary visa, but instead he was on a visitor's visa and ended up having to be deported back to Nigeria. So the mother was left to raise Dave and his two siblings, also boys. Here's where it gets a little bit interesting what happened. It says here that as of April 2019, his brother Christopher was in prison, been sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 18 years for his involvement in the murder in March of 2010 of a 15-year-old. Their other brother, Benjamin, was jailed for four years for conspiracy to the fraud. Now, Dave comes across as a very bright young man, as many musicians tend to be, and had gone to college, had gone to a really good, I'm assuming, really good high school, prep school, and he was actually offered a chance to go to De Montfort University to study law, but he never attended because he wanted to focus on his music. Now, the song is interesting because it talks about Dave's belief that he suffers from manic depression. And the song kind of goes into two parts. The first part is very harsh, discordant, kind of hard. How he lives, how he grew up, how he had to fight for everything, and how tough his neighborhood is in England. The second part of the song, which is towards the end, changes. It's very lyrical. There's a piano downbeat to it. And he describes a lot of things that he's pensive, that he's nervous, that he's afraid about his future and his own mental health. I give the guy a lot of credit because, again, what I find so fascinating about rap is the willingness to share and open yourself up and, you know, bring out all the good and also the bad. Now, again, when I do a song, I only break down certain lines. These lines are relevant to me clinically and help me with my interpretation of the song. So I don't do every line in the song for those that are going to ask that question. Okay, here we go. It's interesting because the first thing is about, you know, hey, something I know about, you know, an individual session. Uh, Tuesday, 23rd of January, 2018, I'm here with David. It's our first session. We're just going to talk about your background where you're from, any issues you've been dealing with, so where should we start? Only thing I don't do is I never say the date out loud. It's, there's really no point because I've written it down about nine times already in the beginning of the assessment and the paperwork that they have to fill out to get started to see me. So I never say, uh, hey, I'm meeting with Bill. It's the 5th of January, 2021, and you know time is 3.30. I never do that. Uh, it's kind of assumed you know, that the person's coming in. Now, the verse, he goes like this, stop all the pain, how do you stop all the pain, huh? I used to hear a voice when I was praying, 
But nowadays, I don't even want to be saved. I don't want to be saved. I was born to be wild. I don't want to be tamed. What he's telling right off the bat, and there's so many lines that are so indicative of mental health issues that I wanted really to highlight them. I did that in yellow. Is Listen to how he's talking. He's like, he's saying, I have issues. I have problems. Pain. I used to hear a voice. I don't even want to be saved. I was born to be wild, but I'm a psycho. If I'm a psycho, then I don't want to be sane. He's basically saying I'm suffering from problems. Then he goes down and he goes, my teacher used to say I need counseling. Couldn't stop asking me, what do you feel? What's interesting to me about that is that schools today have become very, very focused on this. Like, are you having a red day because you're sad? Are you having a blue day because you're feeling good? Are you having a yellow day because you're in the middle? And they think that they're helping these kids by asking all these questions. It's very interesting to me. I was told a story about a young woman. She's now an adult now. She came from a miserable home, and things were really, really rotten there. And she said, I came to school to forget. And I didn't want to be reminded of my feelings. I wanted to bury them. So when they would say to me, like, what's going on? I didn't want to know from that. She says, now all we do is ask these kids questions about their lives. And it's like we're stirring stuff up. And how do you put it back the lid on when something comes out that you don't really want to hear? But now the kid is going to focus on, do they know? Do they know? I get it. I understand what the schools are doing. They feel they're so overwhelmed with mental health issues. It was interesting to get a perspective of someone that said, I don't really want to share, not with a teacher of all people, and people are going to listen to me like, I'm having a really red day. You know, Oh, you need to go to the office then. You need to get help. Oh, okay, Bruce. We'll see you later. Bye. So you got to be careful with those kinds of comments to kids and how you say it. It seems very flippant sometimes and very easy to say it. It's not so simple. You got to be careful with what you say. Now, there are so many old scars they want to reveal. We got off on the wrong foot because I don't want him to heal. I don't want him to heal. To me, he's referring to his brain. I don't want to talk about stuff. I don't want to share anything. My brain is not doing well, and I want to have that stuff brought up. But if you're looking for a psycho, you got one. I thought I had a screw loose, but I lost one. Hey, what do you want? I'm crazy. Crazy. I'm nuts. I'm out of control. You can't touch me. You can't stop me. You can't relate to me. I'm crazy. Now, he talks about going further down the neighborhood that he grow, grew up in, in England, which was, um, obviously is a rough area. I looked that up online. Kiddo, we've seen swords longer than a limo. My bros are blacksmiths like Jaden and Willow. I get that from, you know, uh, Will Smith's kids. Uh, man, there's weapons over here. We're repping over here. We're from the south side, but it's Stratham over here. When I saw that, we're from the south side, I thought, man, Chicago, L.A., Philly, Brooklyn, everyone has like their demarcation point, you know, to define themselves. And it, this song struck home to me more maybe than other songs did because of what happened this past week. Two different young men were killed, one in Chicago, one in L.A., and not just shot, riddled with bullets. Now, I'm thinking about the rapper KTS, who was 31. Dre shot 64 times as he was leaving Cook County Jail. And then Indian Red Boy, 21, shot in his car doing an Instagram live feed. The question was, was there a diss against Nipsey Hussle that he was involved in? A lot of rumors about what's true and not true. I'm not going to get into that part. Other theories, you know, there's always the truth, which will come out in five years from now, whatever. But he was shot and killed. And here's the thing about this, though. Most of my blanks are the ones applying pressure over here. Blank assault. I can get a blank peppered over here. Whoa. You know? This is what life on the streets do to you. There is no hiding. Oh, I'm famous today. You know, I'm a celebrity. Oh, watch out. My rep. 
But people, they're going to gun for you. They're going to find you. They're going to get you. When you say it, when you start to believe it, it's when things happen. And ironically, I was given that name, KTS Dre, to cover. It was one of the people they said, can you cover one of his songs? And it's fascinating to me, and I don't say fascinating, depressing, how the carnage continues. You know, we're tough, we're not afraid, come to our neighborhood, we'll show you who's bad, I know what's bad. You know, he's living a tough life. He has to be under a lot of stress, my clinical opinion. Two brothers in prison for serious crimes. A mother trying to raise three boys by herself. It's hard. It is hard. I dealt with so many people in my line of work that have been to prison, have gone to prison, describe what it did to their families being in prison, families describing what it's like having someone in prison, and you have such anger and depression and bitterness that your kids ended up that way. No one wants to raise a kid ever to say, my son's a murderer, my son's a drug trafficker, you know, my son, my son raped women. My son did armed robberies. Nothing to be really proud of. And families hurt from that. And they go through all kinds of you know maneuvers not to have to think about what's going on because it's so painful. And you kind of check out. Then he goes at the end, he goes, Brother, I'm a careful, humble, reckless, arrogant, extravagant. Man, all over the place, which is what bipolar disorder can certainly want to be. Those manic phases, highs and lows. The manic depression, now called bipolar. Bipolar, meaning you're up and down, up and down. I want to clarify a little bit what bipolar disorder actually is. Because I know people ask, that is the most misunderstood diagnosis in America. Now, see, here's the difference, though. In England and in all of Europe, they are very, very strict on giving medications of this type to kids under the age of 18. It's almost forbidden. It's almost like a non-issue. Where in America, like... But a living through chemistry, pop, 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 pop those pills, pop, 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 pop the pills. It's very different in Europe. They're very, very anti-med, you know, till you're at least 18, 21 years old. We're here, like, boom, start them on a cocktail and go from there. What you're dealing with is the highs of the mania here and then the lows of the depression. Now, what are some of the medications you might hear? There's a lot of them because bipolar is a winner in terms of diagnoses. Oh, if you're bipolar, you know, you're going to get paid here. That's how it works. It's a serious, it's a serious disorder if it's not treated or left unchecked. There are medications called Tegretol, Depakote, with Depakine is another one, Lamictal, and Lithium. All right, now there's other medications that we have as well. There's an old one called Haldol, and then you have newer ones. Uh, we give out ton of Abilify, ton of Zyprex, that's very common, Latuda, Seroquel, those three, Abilify, Zyprex, and Seroquel, tons of that we give out all the time. Now, here's the thing. There's always side effects from these drugs, and that's what people hate the most. So you get nausea, tremors, okay, tremors in your hands a lot of times. You also have issues with... Uh, your hair falls out, sexual problems, weight gain, damage to your liver and kidneys, diarrhea, belly pain, and skin reaction. Most of the time, this stuff goes away after a couple of weeks, but some people, you know, have these issues. And what we tell people with bipolar disorder is you got to stick to treatment. What happens a lot of times, people will say, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really good about myself. I don't need to be on the medications anymore. Take it off trouble. You've got to stick to the medications if, if you're truly bipolar. Now, the end of the song goes like this. Blank, probably battling with manic depression. Then its song changes. There's a bridge there from the mania to the depression phase. And you get the lyrics are deeper they're more personal, they're not boastful, and there's a piano playing, but it's almost like a downward piano to get you in the mood to be contemplative. The lyrics become more real, more honest, more anxiety and fear-related and pensive. Man, I think I'm going mad again. 
It's like I'm happy for a second, then I'm sad again. You're my drug, the instrumental, my therapist. Man, I need some therapy. My girl saying she'll never leave. I'm scared she's going to find a better me. Honest. I need help. I, you know, he's saying this. You know, the, you're my drug, the instrumental, my therapist. I need therapy. And my girl's saying, oh, I'm with you forever. Oh, Dave, we're together. Bye. Can't handle your moods. Can't handle your mood swings. Bye-bye. So replace me. I'm replaceable. Then he goes, deeper insecurities. Very interesting how he puts that together. Like, what if I don't leave a legacy? Then who am I? That I even exist? Very truthful. And it's completely different from the first two-thirds of the song. I wish we could be together, but that ain't how life works. Because he says, mommy lost respect for me. She's worried about that. Maybe my mood swings are affecting her. Maybe she's thinking like, you're not in prison. What are you doing with your life? Where are you going? You're my only hope left. I love my children. Any, any normal mother does, no matter what they do. But you were meant to be someone special. What are you doing with your life, son? Where are you going? Life is not easy, and it, I, 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 I feel bad for that mother. I can, only, I can only imagine the stress she's going under as a parent. I got kids of my own. I, I know what it's like to be stressed out by my kids. Not as deep as this, but I've had some moments. You ever fall asleep because you don't want to be awake? Ding, 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 ding. That's a depression. Or bipolar, the mania, where you, you're running and ripping for three straight days, and finally you're like, you just collapse because you're so exhausted. And then, in a way, you're tired of the reality you're facing. You, you face. You're tired of the ra reality you face. It's a question. Because this is what mental illness is and looks like. You don't want to see what's in front of you. That's why you take the drugs and alcohol. That's why you overeat. That's why you push it. You're over the top. Who wants to deal with reality? It sucks. It's scary. It's frightening. It's real. Can't hide behind anything anymore. Suicide, and he, he talks about feeling suicidal. Doesn't stop the pain. You're only moving it. Love that line. Lives that you're ruining because suicide affects everybody. Talked about that before. You take a pebble, throw it into a pond, the ripples. I always tell people, you're thinking about suicide, if, 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 write down all the people that would be affected by your loss. I'm not saying it's a panacea, it's going to stop you, but I want you to think about that before you consider that kind of action. And finally, I ain't psycho, but my life is. You know, that was interesting to me, and I kind of wondered, he has himself down as bipolar. I'm wondering if growing up the way he did, he doesn't have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's the real issue. Rough childhood, no father, two brothers in prison, rough neighborhood, having to fight to survive, having to, you know, get through things, make some horrible decisions, make some tough decisions. Maybe it's not the bipolar, maybe it's just the world around him, because I ain't psycho, because he kind of throws out that last line, but my life is. Maybe the life has made him into what he is today. And that's why he can't cope. That's a question that I had. I'm going to close with this. I get this all the time from any kid I work with from like 13 to like 25, you know, young adult. I don't want to take the pills. I don't want to be seen as the crazy person. The pills make me look like I'm a loser. I can't control myself. Got to take my pills. Got to take my pills. Everyone thinks I'm a loser. Okay. The pills are there to help you. And bipolar disorder does not go away. It's there. But the goal is, is to learn how to manage your life. And when we tell everybody from this channel, first thing I want you to do is to exercise. That is the most important thing you can do to help stop the mental illness from getting worse. Number two, don't chase bad mental health issues with bad answers. No drugs, no alcohol. 
you got to get normal amount of sleep. Okay, you got to accept that you have an issue. You have mental health issues. Okay, don't overeat. Don't do anything that's going to be never do anything that's self destructive. Finally, surround yourself with people that care about you and stick to a routine. It's when you don't with by if you truly have bipolar that's going to mess you up. But that affects every mental health issue basically. Everything I said really relies goes to everything else as well. Have a good diet. There are other things too, but these are the big three, four that I know will work every single time to help you. And if you got to take the meds, don't play games with the meds. We get that a lot. Oh, I was feeling really great. I had a great month. I didn't need the meds. I was going on a weekend vacation with my friends. Wrong. Then something's going to horrible going to happen. You're going to lose focus and all your gains are going to be crushed. Build on that foundation. It's a great song. Great album. This guy is very talented. I wish him the best. But I also understand from my clinical perspective, he's going through a lot. And I hope he has a support that he should have, support that he needs to continue to be an actor, continue to be a musician, and to make great music. Everybody, Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.